Hello. So here we are back with another coding session. Um, last time um, I did some work to make the uh, the alien character in the game uh, a little bit smarter. Um, let's take a look. Uh, so let me see if I have this off. Otherwise, that would be nice. Okay. Make. Let's take a look. So let's see how we place. So this alien here, we made some changes to make it smarter. So, so when we are a specific distance, he go after us. And then when he's following us. You can't really see us if there is a wall, even if we are closer. Let's see, for example, here. So we are behind the wall, and it can see us only if there is. Uh, we're in the line of sight, right? So that's one change we made um, to make. Um, let me see something. Uh, yeah, right. So. That's a change we made. Well, I made to make uh, to make the alien make look smarter, right? So after that, you know, I put some code in here in this file. It was not very clean, so I did some tidy uh, off record. And um, and let's take a look at this. So player distance now has here is player inside. And see, there is some, there's a function here, which is a function, it's not a macro, that is uh, absolute uh, subtraction. So make it, basically, it gives you the absolute value of performing a subtraction. Um, so when I was implementing that, uh, initially I thought, ah, I can make a macro, right? So the, uh, the compiler will expand that macro and instead of using a function. And I didn't do that because, um, well, I didn't do that. I was thinking that, you know, it would, there would be a substitution in some places. And uh, I kind of, I don't think I did, I, I explained properly why that was a good idea, a bad idea, right? And then someone on Twitter today, I think it was Styron Dragon, he mentioned that and and I run some tests and I think it's going to be interesting. I'm going to explain why I didn't do that. So if we go to absolute subtraction, that by the way, I already did some optimizations here. So this is the code that is in C, you know, that we were using in C and I changed that here to assembler. So we're going to use the, code, the C code and let's go in the assembler version. And I mean, dust pragma here should be because when I have the warnings, I have the compiler configured. So when we compile, well, on Mac file, on the Mac file, I pass flags to the compiler. So when um, when we you know, when there is a warning, I want that to be an error because it's very useful. It will tell me, for example, when I uh, declare a variable that I'm not using and things like that. And, and here should tell me that this function, when it's running in assembler, is not returning a value and the parameters have not been used. I don't know why <laughs> this version or here in this code is not telling me anything, but, you know, I put the pragmas anyway, so it's not telling me anything about, you know, it's not... It's not triggering an error when you know it's fine because we know we're returning things anyway. So let's compile this. Um, let's do this. So and then let's take a look to the to the code that this is going to generate. So this is the code that we generate. The compiler is generating, which is not really too bad. But for example, there are some some things that Tell me already that perhaps this is not great because it's using a IY register, which is quite expensive. 
So let's take a look to uh, so right. So this is 194 cycles compared with my code that is that is well. Okay, so that's not fair. So let's see. So it's 82. My code is 82 cycles, but it's not this one we need to look at, it's this one because the return line should be under here, but it's part of the, the when I use inline assembler, um, the uh, compiler is going to add the return anyway, so I don't put that myself anyway. So it's compared with the previous one, so it's 184 compared with 82, right? Although, well, you know, there are some branches and stuff, but I think it's okay to compare those numbers so this is about 100 cycles slower but that's not actual actually well i mean it's bad but well i mean we use in c because we don't want to write everything in assembler and sometimes um, you need to decide if something is worth converting into assembler or writing assembler by hand or if it's just fine keeping the code in c in kernel, for example, I didn't bother to convert this um, because it was being used in a very specific places. And, you know, of course, I mean, I can say 100 cycles, but um, it's not about making the fastest thing always. It's just that it needs to play the way it needs to play. Um, so if it's not the slow or because when the code is being run, um, you know, there's no real benefit on saving those 100 cycles, then it really doesn't matter. And I mean, in this case, this function is very small and it's going to, it's not going to change ever or it's very unlikely. So maintaining this piece of assembler here is probably okay. Um, but in some other cases, the assembler code will be harder to maintain. So you want to do this change is probably, so usually I don't like to convert a lot of things in assembler if I don't need to. And if I know that I need to convert something into assembler, I usually do it when I'm getting to the end of the project because I know that that code is like unlikely to change anymore. Otherwise, maintaining that is, is too hard and it's is not worth it. I mean, that's the whole point of using C, right? Otherwise, I will write everything in assembler. So in this case, you know, it saves about 100 cycles. Uh, so yeah, okay, so let's get rid of this. Uh, and in here, let's get, do we keep this equal? No, let's, let's go back to my version. Now, the question here is, do we use this function or do we use the inline? So I'm going to change the signature of this one. So it's not, um, it doesn't confuse the linker. And then in here, that I have a macro that I add sub in line. Um, that, you know, we may want to use this sometime because in some cases it might give you some speed uh, in exchange of size. Uh, but, okay, so first of all, let's see. Uh, all right, sorry, let's put this back. So let's compile the code so we can have a rough idea of the cost of, of expanding that. So here we have the, let's do another split, not like this, more like this. So we can have here. So, so this is a current size with the function, right? So let's see if we can make this properly. So it's a meaningful test actually. So, and this, is going away and then we say that app soap is up so in line right oh so right so up soap is absolutely in line so basically it's going to use this function that it will be replaced in line by the compiler you know whatever we use up so 
So compile that again. And this is the size of the code now here. So, well, it's, it's not that bad. So, you know, it's around 300 bytes. So, you know, that's size. And the fact that it's using more code in this case is could be an indication that uh, it's going to be slower, I guess. So let's take a look to the to the generated assemble, assembler in aux. Right. So see, this is a this is the double underscore because of the signature of C code. So this is my code that we're not using now. Oh, let's go back to where we were. Oh, sorry, we. So we don't we don't using that anymore. Um, so player distance has returns this because we're using this in in other places. So uh, let me see. In here, this is quite a straightforward, and the end result is not terrible, I guess. Um, but my big concern, that's what I tried to say the other day in the previous session, is that when you do something like this, this is going to go completely off to the roof. So let's take a look. So, so this, this, this comment here is telling you, this comment here is telling you the code in C. And now what comes after that is the generated assembly for that code. I mean, you already can see that this is going to be kind of massive. <laughs> so let's get to the end of this. So we're not going to include the return, right? So, so this is in line is 1340. Okay. Now, Let's go back to my code. So we remove this, we recommend this, and well, we could be using git and just unstash, right? But it's not ready. Right, so let's be sure. Yeah, so we're back to the code we had before when we started. So compile again. And now, let's go back to the call. So, right. So now, what? Well, <laughs> uh, okay. So now it's way shorter, but it makes sense because, you know, it's making a call to this um, that the code is actually in here. So it's calling this. So let's grab this, get the size of that. So that is including the return. So it's 92 times, try not making any mistake. Yeah, it's 92 times, let's go back down. So we're calling that three times, three times plus the cost of this. I mean, the function is doing more things, but we assume that it's going to be the same and we didn't get the return previously. So that's 263. Right, so there you are. I'm not sure this is, you can see that. Oh, that's not the one I wanted to copy. Is this one here? Minus, minus the previous one. So, so that right there, that's 801 bytes diff cycles difference. So, so in this case, I would say this is probably a very good idea to not use uh, the inline version. Uh, why? Because if we go back to the alien, the alien code, every time we did it called the alien, alien, in order to decide if we're going to follow the player or not, we're going to call player distance, right? 
So this is going to be used quite a lot. So I think saving those 800 cycles is probably a very good idea, right? So yeah, that's why I didn't use uh, the macro. Now, the inline version could be useful, for example, if we use that in, um, so we call here player distance and player distance calls player inside and player inside called this to here. So hmm, we could use it in, in line here. Like that, ooh, 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 ooh. just like this, and uh, the difference in this case is about 20 something bytes, which is not the end of the world. Um, and it could be a little bit faster because we're saving the, the, the call, we're saving the red, the return, and um. Let's see, let's play it inside, let's play it inside, it's here. So it's not, it's not too bad. Again, the code that this is generating is not, is not brilliant really because, see, in AH, I wouldn't do it like this, definitely. Uh, in this case, I wouldn't use, see, uh, he's, you know, the compiler is, well, okay, fair enough. No, it's not fair enough. It's actually uh, you overwriting HL here. There's no reason to use IY here. Um, so this is quite expensive, I guess. Um, so I'm not sure in this case, even in this case, this makes a lot of sense because this code, it will be, it's up to here, right? Because yeah, this is one case that goes to the other. So that is 91 cycles, worst case. No, right, yeah, no, well, 91 cycles in one case. Actually, I didn't, get the right code, it should be more like this. Oh no, oh, see, I didn't know that. So you need to get to the next line. Yeah, so in it, oh, wow. Okay, so we found a bug here. So there is a bug here with, uh, with set 80 count. It's not detecting this case, see? It's running with debug. Well, it really doesn't matter. It's not going to tell us anything because it's basically, it's not matching this one, right? So that's weird because no, it's because this case is not, well, mm, I need to look at that. Anyway, there is a chance that the measure, measurement we're getting is not, they're not completely accurate because this case is not being matched, but well, I will have to fix that. Uh, so these two cases are being skipped because, yeah, so, yeah, this one is also being, it's not being matched. Shall we look at that quickly? Well, quickly, it could be. So I think I have the code here and then, yeah, the problem is that, mm, okay, let's take a look to, the, to that regular expression. So we're looking for sub space A. Oh, so that case is not even, oh, I see, because it's including, oh, right. So sub, sub A, 
this is yeah this is a thing with syntax of different assemblers so sub a so sub hl this one here why is not so this one here it's actually the same as saying uh, this because the accumulator a is implicit in that case but it's not showing it so uh, yeah but there, that's probably true for also for uh, HL and a add does add support HL I'm not completely sure no doesn't have that so uh, anyway so this case and it's seven cycles. This is not the, this is the case that is that is missing. Yeah, I need to double check this because there are probably more like this one. So, so basically we're looking for this, and then <laughs> the funny part of this is that it's going to be a uh, a and then comma and then potentially it can be a space, right? And then that. So with that change, we run this again. Do, 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 which one we were looking for? We're looking for a disco here. Up to here, then run again. Yeah, then it's matching that. So A H L. Which is seven cycles. Yeah, that's correct. Actually, hmm, I think we have more cases like this one where you have implicit accumulator c a d c h a h l yeah that one is there but then there is no a d c h l only hmm that's weird anyway so this is a bug for this one so let's commit that so this is uh, missing so a HR case that correct yes and we can push that so it's already there oh don't look at that right so there you are fixed anyway so we will we were doing something and now i just lost what i want okay right so in this case uh that is so we agree this is 95 105 cycles mm. i mean it looks like a lot to me so let's compile again not this one so now the call to that is <laughs> still quite a lot uh, there you are it's actually this one is slower right that's 120 and this is 91 and also we need to run the code so i'm going to leave that thank you very much so it's going to leave it like this because it's faster actually uh, so do we have more cases like this one another one another one another one and those we agree that we don't want to touch them and this is unrelated so right so that's a good thing good optimization oh well we changed that, that buffer so so let's compile this um sorry comment this so this is Yeah, 
Yay. Excellent. So. Hmm. Why it keeps us with the password? It should cache that. It didn't cache that password. That's weird. Anyway. So, yeah, that was a good optimization. Um, cool. So, yeah, so that was one thing I wanted to talk about today. Um, and as a side effect, we fa fixed a bug in set eight account and also improved the behavior of the alien. That, by the way, we didn't even test the two things. Do you know that this thing still works? It probably does. <laughs> yeah, of course it does. Hmm. Ooh, man. Yeah, another thing I have changed uh, is that um, if you remember from previous sessions, I've been looking at a way of, of, of producing uh, the the little you know that tearing that we have on the screen because the scroll it takes way more than a frame to draw the screen so I'm gonna change um, that basically I removed the vsync synchronization for that because it really doesn't matter what I do it's not going to be long you know it's not going to be quick enough so I have noticed that changing you know if I don't do the vsync it means that the Turing uh, changes to different parts of the screen <laughs> and it looks like it's a little bit better than having the Turing always in the same uh, row of tiles. So yes, I think uh, for now I'm going to leave it like that. I'm still not completely happy. I mean, it looks okay. And if you play this on, on a real specy on a CRT, the CRT, uh, you know, on a CRT TV or or monitor, I guess, um, you don't notice that problem that much. Uh, everything looks slightly better, I guess, because I mean, this is uh, an emulator, and I'm using a PAL filter uh, to make it look a little bit more the way it should, but this is still not anywhere close to. You know, you, you can see a lot of stuff going on here that you wouldn't see really on a CRT machine. I don't know, CRT screen, sorry. Anyway, so this is kind of, uh, it, it works anyway. Um, what else I wanted to say today? Yeah, I wanted to mention something. Um, you know, when I do this session, sometimes it's, it's late on the day, after a day of work and stuff, so, uh, I'm a little bit tired and I was watching a little bit one of the previous sessions and I found that um, some bits I said were not completely clear. I mean, I was confused. It was confusing for me. I knew what I was talking about, but uh, okay. So um, I think uh, sometimes I mentioned tiles um, and that's probably something uh, internal from my engine so let's take a look to to tile might help us to explain things so right so let's go to the other map that has more interesting stuff so look at this um and let's say view green right okay so what is a tile well obviously uh the specy doesn't have support for tiles it has support for uh well for nothing really um so on the specy uh you encode every single uh well we call it character but i guess we could say in tile but it's not a tile so you have cells of eight per eight pixels um the, the way the specy works is basically um, those styles have a bitmap that is basically 
one bit per pixel. So you have a zero of, of a one. Zero is uh, is background, and one is ink. And then you have in a different memory address for that specific cell, you have the values for paper and ink. So that's why you have color clash because you can color clash because you can have more than two colors per eight per eight pixels. Um, then. Is eight per eight because being a bitmap uh, that is monochrome, you know, you can have only paper or ink. It means that you can encode eight per eight using eight bytes, one byte per row, right? So that is what you know. I call sometimes styles, but that will be a character or a cell or whatever you want to call that but probably not tile. Sometimes I say tiles. Now, my engine, what it does is, is, is it keeps track of those eight per eight cells and is, it draws them on screen when that cell is dirty. So it means that it has changed because either because you know, the content has changed or the attribute has changed, one of them. Um, now, if we're looking at, at the map here, you can see that the, that the grid I have is it's not 8 per 8, it's 16 per 16, right? And here, in this area here, you have my tile set, because my tiles are 16 per 16, which is 4 8 per 8. And that's where the confusion was the other day because I was mixing, I was always referring to tiles and then sometimes explained that it was eight per eight and sometimes it was 16 per 16. And I was watching the video and I said, that's really confusing. Um, I, it's very hard to follow what I'm saying. Anyway, so the basic idea is that because uh, in this case, the map is 32 per 20, right? So. 32 per 20, 16 per 16, uh, let's, so 32 per 20, let's get mm, with this, so, so, so 32 per 20, so that's 600, 640 bytes to encode a whole map, right, but then, because I use, uh, I don't use one byte per tile, so I can only manage 16 tiles in the map. So to encode 16, you only need four bytes. So this is actually divided by two. So that's 320 bytes that I need to encode my map. And then on top of that, I will apply compression, right? But uh, that's why, I mean, if I was, using, for example, uh, 8 per 8, right? So this would be multiplied by 4. And even if I I use 2 bytes, you know, that's 1.2K. That's, you know, compared with the 320 that I use, that's too much memory for the map, right? So that's the reason why I use... Uh, 16 per 16, which is two cells, you know, two per two. You know, some people call this uh, super tiles or meta tiles. That you can define different ways. I have, the, let's say this is super tiles and they are fixed to be, you know, uh, whatever I put in here. Um, so, yeah. And then what it makes confusing this game also is because um, I do scrolling. And I don't scroll, the, my unit when I'm doing scrolling is not uh, the, the, a tile in the map. It's actually a cell, which is 8 per 8. Um, so you have 16 per 16, you can scroll 8 per 8, and it's kind of okay. Uh, it's not too smooth, but, you know, it's reasonable. Um, 
So, you know, I have different coordinate systems. And that's why when we were working with the alien the other day, uh, I got a little bit confused because we were looking at, at this. And when I was looking at is math blocked, I was thinking that <laughs> these here were pixels and it doesn't make sense because um, because if it was on the screen it's okay but then if it was pixels I mean we're talking about 32 per 8 oh sorry start my calculator 32 per 8 that will be 256 which is about no yeah that's exactly yeah we could have stored that in one single byte so uh, it could be it could be sprite it could be sorry it could be pixels uh, yeah I think I did this size on purpose so I can I can position any object on the map with one byte otherwise it gets messy because I need to add back extra bits if you know if it was you know, if it's instead of 32 was, for example, 40, then you can't really start this number in 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 eight bits in a byte. Um. Anyway, so uh, yeah, because the map, yeah, the map is is just in uh, tiles, but not, <laughs> but it's not using the 16 per 16. It's using eight per eight because I expand that, because I need that for scrolling. Anyway, too many coordinate systems, too many different units, and that's why I got confused. So I wanted to clarify that. Um, so when I mentioned tiles in this game, the tile sets when I'm building the map is 16 per 16. Otherwise, uh, on the specy, it's very likely you're talking about eight per eight pixels, which is eight bytes. Um, and I think uh, this is going to be all for this session. Um, I want to implement something else, but even if I continue now, I will probably start a new session after a short break. So this one is not too long. Um, and you know, we covered the optimization. I wanted to explain why um, I didn't use uh, that macro. Although, I mean, we saw that at the end, there was a little bit, you know, benefit in a couple of places to use it, but not all of them. Anyway, I mean, as a general rule, I usually work, write things first in C, even if it's really, really, really slow. I mean, it's not always the case, but sometimes it's, it's very slow. And then after that, when I have a version that works, it's usually easier to write that in, in assembler. Um, I mean, the strategy, the code is going to look very different because in C, you're going to use variables, local variables or, or things like that, that um, if you can get away of using just um, registers in assembler, it's going to be faster. Then when you have the version in assembler, you can compare that with, with the stuff you did in C and, and you validated already. So it's easier to get things uh, working, especially when um, the stuff can be quite complicated. I mean, in this case, this is not too difficult to follow, but I guess writing this in assembler is definitely harder to maintain if I change my mind and I want to do something differently, right? So, yeah. So basically, I mean, we worked in C because it's faster. We can get a prototype uh, very quickly. And then after that, just optimize, you know, you can optimize whatever you want uh, writing things in assembler. Okay, so that's all for today. Uh, remember, if you want to uh, watch more of this, uh, you don't want to miss any, you can subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Um, and remember that you can leave comments or you can mention things in Twitter like uh, Sterling Dragon did uh, with the macro. And um, I mean, it can be interesting, we can discuss about it and explain things and improve the game. Um, but for now, that's all. Bye.